This video is going to be about finding the limit of a sequence as n goes to infinity from a graph, such as this. So far, we've studied the limit of a sequence from a chart by plugging in bigger and bigger numbers for n in whatever equation we have. And we've also looked at limits from just the equation using certain tricks, such as in this particular equation, we would observe that it's geometric because of the exponent. The base is less than 1, so the limit would have been 0. Now let's discuss limits of sequences graphically. In the left, you will notice the graph of a sequence. The important thing to notice, or one of the important things to notice, is that these points are not connected. Sequences are just a set of distinct terms, so we plot them as individual points. I've called this sequence g sub n, and our goal is to find the limit of g sub n as n approaches infinity. When looking on this graph, you should note that n is actually our x-axis, and then g sub n would be graphed on the y. So if we want to consider n going to infinity, we want to look at the x-axis as we increase those n values, sort of going forever and ever and ever off the graph this way, this arrow. You can see that as n gets bigger, the sequence values are getting smaller, looking just at the y. So we start up here at this height, then our next value is at this height, and then this one's a little lower. They're basically getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, though they do not look like they will ever cross it. So we will say that this limit as n goes to infinity is zero because the height of the function is decreasing to nearly zero. It's going to get closer and closer and closer and closer if we picture it going farther out, but never actually hit it. Let's look at another example. Here we have another graph of a sequence. You'll notice that these points are actually connected, but let's forget for a minute and just think of them as a series of points. So think of it as actually just the sequence. Again, we're interested to find the limit of h sub n, I've called this sequence h sub n, as n approaches infinity. So again, our n's are down here on the x, and our h sub n's would then be graphed on the y can almost think of as if we had made a chart and said it was at 1, 3, 2, 4. So this was 1, 3, 2, 4, etc. And we were graphing those points. So as n gets bigger, again, as we move to the right on the x-axis, we can see that our sequence values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But there sort of seems to be this invisible barrier right here at 5. And it doesn't actually look like we're ever going to cross 5. We're just getting closer and closer and closer to it. So we would say that the limit as h sub n of h sub n as n goes to infinity is 5. We're approaching 5. All right, let's look at one last example. Yet again, we have a sequence, these red dots, almost ignore the line connecting them because we're just thinking of them as a sequence. And we want to find the limit of this sequence, eb sub n, as n approaches infinity. Now we weren't really given much of this x-axis for these n values, but let's see if we can figure it out just from these small, the small amount of information. We can see that as n increases, the height of our function also seems to be increasing. And we're not really given any indication that it will ever stop and start to hit a barrier like in the previous slide or ever go back down even. So we'll say 
that the limit of m sub n as n goes to infinity is also infinity. All right, I'd like to address one last thing in this video, and we will get back to graphs, I promise. But my thought is, why do we keep talking about sequences? Isn't this class about functions? And yes, it is. And functions are actually really similar to sequences. We actually just started with sequences because they're a little bit simpler. So let's look at some similarities and differences of functions and sequences. So here's a chart summarizing the key differences between sequences on the top and functions on the bottom, but also hopefully highlighting some similarities. Equations, not too different, just a few notation things. We used n for sequences, we usually use x in functions, we use the little subscript in sequences, we use function notation in functions. Don't focus on those. The charts and graphs will really show you the important differences. And honestly, it's only that sequences have discrete points. We say the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term, and then we graph them as those individual points. There's no first point five term, there's no three and a half term, there's no negative four term. Whereas functions, we have a lot more freedom. We can plug any x's in, we could do three, I just did a few here, negative three, negative 2.5, negative two, all perfectly fine. You see in the graph, we have values over here for negative x's, they're all nicely connected, not just limited to the right side of the x-axis. So the big takeaway here is that even though we've been doing sequences, all of this stuff with fun uh, limits still works with functions. So if you see a graph that's all connected, don't panic. It still works fine. And that's my takeaway message about functions versus sequences. All right, just one really quick example showing how this all works the same way. Here I've written a function. You'll notice it's not a sequence. I used f of x. I used x over here. But it works exactly the same way as those geometric sequences, except this is an exponential function. But we are going to do exactly the same thing where we look at the base of the exponent to see what happens as x goes to infinity. We'll notice that the base is less than 1, so the limit of this function, which I've called f of x, as x goes to infinity, is 0, since the base is less than 1. So here's the rest of your homework for tonight. Look at these two graphs. One is g of x, and the other is h of x. And tell me what the limit of these graphs is as x approaches infinity. So do one for g of x, one for h of x. And as a little bonus question down here, I'll be really impressed if you can tell me what the limit of h of x is as x goes to negative infinity as well. My other last hint is to think about horizontal asymptotes, for those of you who remember what those are. Good luck.